Hello, and welcome once again to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by New Patients Incorporated and NPIClick.com. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated. Along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to our podcast in the uh, Dental Marketing Mastery Series. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing fine. Actually, our new, we've, we've renamed our series. We have? Nobody yeah, tells me it, anything. It's two dental marketing experts walk into a bar. Yeah. Okay. I, do, yeah. I did know that. I forgot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait a minute. I have to go get into a bar first. <laughs> That's right. We're just trying to get people's attention. Uh, good. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about attracting bigger cases which is something most dentists uh, want to do, I believe. Well, they do now. Yeah. About uh, 2009, 10, 11, and 12, and 13, they would have done dentistry to the neighbor's dog if the dog walked into their office because they were slow. Yeah. But uh, so let's go through a history, dental, uh, dental, <laughs> dental uh, memory loop. 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 was, um, man, it was a boom for bigger cases. Um, America had artificially increased home prices. America was able to max their credit cards, pay it off with home equity and start the whole process all over again. (laughs) (laughs) And amazingly, during that same exact time frame, every dentist in the United States became a cosmetic dentist. Amazing, right? Overnight. Just overnight, (laughs) right. So I hope everybody knows we're just having some fun here. But yeah, but the lessons here are, are real. They're real business lessons. Um, when your patients have either more available credit or, you know, more money in their pocket, they tend to buy more elective dentistry. Makes sense. And when that happens, um, you know, dentists want their piece of the pie. They want to, you know, they, and and for a lot of reasons, dentists, you know, when they get in their late forties or mid forties to let's say mid fifties, you know, most of them we sit down with them and talk to them, and they, you know, if I do another two surface composite, I'm going to stab myself in the ear with a pencil, right? I mean, it's like the most boring thing they could possibly. They want to get challenged. They want they want to do more good, right? They want they want they want the bigger, sexier yeah, cases, big, sexy, challenging stuff, man. I mean, I you know. I mean, you and I get bored at our business, you know, doing what we do all day, right? So, I, can, I, you know, we understand it. So, there's another reason why you might want bigger, more challenging cases. Another reason might be that you're, you know, you're just a giver and you, 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 you love helping, just helping people. You know, okay, yeah, there's monetary rewards and, and there's, you know, ego stroking and rewards, but, you know, helping people is, is, probably why most of you even went into this field. So for all those reasons, doing the bigger cases and wanting to do more of the bigger cases makes total and complete sense. So let's bring us forward now to 2019 because as we pulled out of this recession, by the way, dentistry lost about 18% of its total revenue during the recession. And, um, yeah, almost everybody listening to this is a clinician. So if they lost 18% of their revenue during the recession, that means some people ignored their teeth. And being the clinician that you all are, what happens when you ignore your teeth? They go bad. Right, they exactly. Hurt. <laughs> they hurt and then they call and they become emergency patients. And now what we're living through now, basically 2016, 17, 18, 19, um, is a uh, is a statistical rebound from the eighteen point loss um, during the recession. 
Now, now I'm going to go back in time to 2008, 2009, when Howie and I were doing our articles and our seminars and we were doing podcasts and we were telling all of our clients, get out of the niches, get out of the niches, right? Go back to family dentistry. That's where you're going to, you know, that's where not only you're going to survive, but you're going to grow through the recession. And most of our, well, all of our clients listen to us because we direct all their marketing. But we, we reach a lot more than just our clients. So we're trying to raise the flag. Hey, get out of niches, get out of niches, go right back to family dentistry. That's what's going to save you during the recession. And for a lot of dentists, it, it worked. It, 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 they, didn't, they didn't lose 18% of their revenues. The rest of the market did, but they didn't. Well, now during the recovery, now what we're seeing all over the place is Dental practice is just slammed. They're just slammed with volumes of patients, a lot of hygiene, um, and um, in some cases, nowhere to put them. So there's expansion, there's new, you know, new operatories, there's new providers, so on and so forth. Then what you end up with is, hey, I think I want more bigger cases now. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of come full yeah. circle, you know, over the last 10 to 12 years to where, yeah, yeah. Back in yeah, 2004, yeah. everybody was a bondadonist, right? And um, every patient that walked in had porcelain deficiency syndrome. And now amazingly, all of America yeah. again <laughs> has porcelain deficiency syndrome. Or your titanium, or right? Either titanium one. So, deficiency. Yeah. So, and that's fine. That's 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 where your that's where your mind should be because when you're maxed out, capacity wise, the only real way to grow if you're not going to expand your capacity is have higher higher average revenue per patient and do bigger cases. Right, and and the patients these days they can afford it and they want. They want their teeth to look yeah, great. And, they want to be able to and smile. Many again. of them have disposable so, income. Okay. The housing prices stabilized exactly. somewhere around 16, the yeah, middle of 16. And we said back in 2008 that that, that was going to be your marker for when you could start to allocate a certain percentage of your budget back into a dental niche. So, you know what? This is probably a good time for a break, Howie. Um, and when we come back, let's go through yeah. uh, how we set up marketing plans to go over or to go after those bigger cases. Bigger cases, yeah. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. What is NPI Fusion Marketing? Fusion Marketing is a highly targeted, highly efficient, and highly effective way to present the benefits of your dental practice simultaneously online and offline to only the most qualified new patient candidates immediately surrounding your practice. What you get is a more consistent flow of higher quality new patients. If you are interested in Fusion, go to newpatientsinc.com and click Get Started. We will build a marketing plan for your practice, which could include Fusion. All right, we are back, and we're talking about how to attract bigger cases. Yeah, well, we gave you the setup because <laughs> there's a lot of history here, right? So we've lived through a couple of these. And um, okay, so now you're ready. You've you've got a nice, healthy family practice. Now, what do you always say, Howie, about the family practice? Where, what do you say about big cases and having a big family practice? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know. Targeting a niche, you know, or niche, um, you know that that that's fraught with trouble. When when really your patient base is where you're going to get most of your big cases. Okay, that's and and that sounds counterintuitive. You know, well, I want implant cases. I'll just go out and advertise for implants. You know, well, mm, yeah, but oftentimes that doesn't work. You know, the people that know you best, your own patients, that's where you're going to find the big cases. Well, that's certainly the initial place that you would go. Yeah. And that's so step one is internal. And you, so the next logical question is, well, what the hell can I do internally? And 
99.999% of the time when we take a look, the doctor's not really doing hardly anything internally to promote the benefits of, well, we're just using implants as an example. You can superimpose sleep apnea, Invisalign, the six-month smiles. You can just, cosmetic dentistry sedation. You can just inject any, any niche into this conversation and basically say the same thing. Your existing patients really only know or remember what you did to them. And we will both tell you uh, with 100% certainty that when you promote niches, you are not just promoting a service to a specific patient of record. You could be promoting a service to that patient's mom or that patient's dad, where that mom that you're talking to about the benefits of implants would fix her mom's slipping dentures. And it just so happened last weekend, her mom was complaining about her slipping dentures. You see what we're saying? Okay. So yeah, communicating yeah. the benefits, and, and again, we're just using implants as an example, insert any niche you want, doesn't necessarily have to be the communication doesn't necessarily have to be direct with the end patient, but the patient can then take that information throughout her family and see if it applies um, really through the rest of your career. Okay, so Howie's point about, hey, communicate with your existing patients first is 100% right on because that'll always be the lowest cost and the highest ROI. And for most dentists, especially with implant, the, the GPs going into implant, placing implants, they kind of like to pick their cases at the very beginning just to make sure they're you know, doing everything right and they're comfortable with everything. So who better to choose your first few cases than you knowing the dental history of your existing patients, right? So once you do that, let's say you get 20, 30, 40 cases under your belt. Okay, now, now if you want 100 cases a year, now, it's, now you're going to have to go outside of your, your patient base. Now you're going to have to go direct to consumer, which brings up uh, really, you know, what's our, it's not secret sauce, but what's our recipe uh, when, a, when a client, when a dentist client comes to us and says, hey man, I want to, I'm going to still do this, the family marketing to keep my practice full. I'm not going to not do that, but I really like a few more big cases. What should I do? And we almost always, I'm not going to say always because there is no such thing, but I'm going to say almost always is we will take, uh, and let's just use implants as an example. We'll take a niche like implants and we will split the budget 50, 50, 50% what and 50% what Howie internal external. Is that what you're getting in? No, no, no. Online and offline. Oh, right. There you go. So why would we do that? Because online, for the most part, not completely. When you're using marketing dollars to promote online, what you're, what you're hoping for is to be in front of someone who's searching for something. So they have a real or perceived need for dental. I'm just using implants, but they have a real or perceived need for dental implants at this moment and they grab their phone and they do a search or they grab their laptop and they do a search or their iPad or whatever. Okay. That's a very passive form of marketing. It's a very good form of marketing. Passive doesn't mean bad. It just means it's passive. You're just kind of sitting there, you're just kind of sitting there waiting. And when they type it in, you're hoping that your ad shows up or maybe your Google local positioning shows up or your website optimization shows up in the organics at the bottom and you hope they select you. And they look at your website or landing page and they decide to call you and they make an appointment. So you're waiting for them to have a need and find you. That's what online marketing, for the most part, really is. If you combine that with 
aggressive marketing, which is delivering a message to someone who doesn't currently have a real or perceived need. They didn't even ask you for it. But you're educating them on the benefits of X, implant sedation, insert niche here, cosmetics, whatever niche it is. And you're selecting the audience very carefully, immediately surrounding your office so that you're not wasting money. So you're only delivering these messages to really only the people who are going to be able to uh, benefit from them, afford them, and be good patients in your practice. Those are the two ways you, sur- you, you capture the market on the passive end and you funnel the market on the aggressive end toward you. That's how you circle. Basically, you just it's kind of drawing a circle immediately or surrounding your practice and say, okay, all of these potential new patients, I'm either going to capture them aggressively or I'm going to capture them passively. Doesn't really matter. Either way, I'm going to capture them. They're mine. So when yeah, people that's that's your universe that you operate in for your whole career, basically. Exactly. That's that that's a great word, but universe. That's that's your that is your universe, Doc. Okay. And that's how you have to look at it, and that's how you approach it. You don't approach it just online, you don't approach it just offline. You approach it using both simultaneously. Um and the result, uh, and 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 what Howie brought up before, you never stop communicating with your existing patient base. Okay, that never. You're, I'm telling you, you're going to get more cases out of your existing patient base than you probably will. You know, going direct to consumer. Okay, so continue to the to to go after your existing patient base. Make sure everyone on the team understands that. Communicating the benefit of X, even if the patient, even if you know the patient isn't or isn't going to benefit from it or can't, depending on um, you know their oral health or or what have you or their needs, that doesn't it almost doesn't matter because that person is in contact with twenty five, thirty five, forty five uh, people within their social circle. 150 people, 200 people, 300 people. And they probably have anywhere from two to 20 in their family circle. Um, And all of those people could be um, or could benefit uh, from these, these niches. So uh, always, 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 always pay attention to internal communication with your existing patients it can be really subtle. It doesn't, it could be very, very, mother, we're uh, uh, the reception area loops that we produce on a flat screen. They don't even have sound. It's just, did you know? You know, you can, you can, there's a solution for slipping dentures. You know, did you know? You can have a new smile in one day. Did you know? You're right? Just a bunch of did you knows. Okay. Um, your yeah. your hygienist, yeah. your assistant, your front desk, the doctors, they all have to be on this same, you know, the same uh, communication style. In other words, everybody needs to understand, okay, here's what we're offering. Here are the benefits. Here's who we're going to talk to about it. Here's why. Here's what we're going to say. And here are the tools we have. We have this thing in the reception room. We have these email templates. We're going to be uh, posting some informative pieces on our social media. We have a new page on our website that talks about it. You know, so so there's supporting marketing things to help everyone along the way. So you never you never ignore your own patient base, but when you go outside the office, absolutely fifty uh, fifty online and offline. Uh, if you know a dentist who is maybe struggling, trying to get their practice built or trying to really do well with their marketing, trying to market a niche, something like, you know, implants or any niche. Almost every time you're, you'll find that they're only doing either online or offline. They're not doing both. And magically, when you combine the two, 
And if you sit down and think about it, the, the difference between passive and aggressive marketing, you'll sit there and go, yeah, that makes sense. Why would I just sit here and wait for people? Why wouldn't I go out and try to get them before someone else diagnoses them and tells them they need implants and then they become a shopper? Then they go on Google looking for a deal. Why wouldn't I want to get them before that happens? And the answer is you want all of them. You want them before they get to Google and shop and you want them when they are on Google looking for dental services. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to everybody because it's, yeah. So it, it's some for some reason it flies under the radar. It's a it's a way it's a way for both of these yeah. online and offline promotions to work together, just like every successful internet company, you Amazon, Walmart, Overstock.com, Nike. I don't care what online property that you know as being Facebook. Every one of those promotes their online properties offline. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay, so n none of them just sit there and, you know, and if you look at offline ads, um, like let's say I'm just, the easiest one is TV or radio, it doesn't matter. Um, every one of those commercials that you see or hear ends in the website domain. Come visit yeah. us at Nike.com. Come visit yeah. us at Amazon.com. Come visit us at Facebook.com. I get direct mail from Google all the time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so all you're all you would be doing is doing what all the big successful companies are doing. You're just going to do it in a very small, as Howie pointed out, in your own small universe. That's to your benefit. So anyway, that's how you go after niches and we, um for those who are wondering what your budget allocation should be um depends on your practice position but you know 25 percent of your total budget can go after niches 75 go after the fit the, the you know the staple family high-end family market and then use 25 percent of your budget to go after whatever whatever niche you want we, we, we want you to be happy as a dentist too. And we understand how boring two surface composites can be. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Uh, that'll about do it for uh, today. We thank you all out there for listening to us and uh, we hope you come back next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye now. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can get all our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, and Libsyn.com, and on our websites, newpatientsinc.com and npiclick.com.